YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, all that other vertical content is big on the interwebs. But if you're anything like me, you want to edit your vertical content in DaVinci Resolve. There's audio plugins and VFX and all that other cool stuff that you can put in in Resolve, but maybe you can't do it in another app. So welcome back to Creative Reality, my friend. Today we're going to dive into DaVinci Resolve 20 and I'm going to show you my workflow for creating YouTube Shorts. I guess it'll work on Instagram too. Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you what we're working with. Here I have my fancy dancy horizontal timeline. That's not gonna work for us. We need a new timeline. We're doing the vertical thing. So we're gonna start by right clicking in our master area here. You could click Control N to create a new timeline. But we're gonna go to timelines, create new timeline. And timeline two is fine. Use Fairlight preset, whatever. Uncheck use project settings. If you're like me, you have default project settings. Check up here for a video I made on that. Then come back. But we unchecked use project settings so we can go to format. And I have a custom in here, but let's just say we wanted to do 1920 by 1080. That's kind of the bare minimum, right? Well, we want to check use vertical resolution. It flip flops the 1080 and the 1920 to make a vertical format timeline. Click create. It creates it. If you don't see both timelines over here, click on this box here and display stack timelines. It goes away and then it comes back. So now we have both of our timelines open. We'll come through here and we'll grab the footage that we want. Let's just grab this section right here. We'll control C to copy, come over here and we'll control V to paste. And I have made this example a little bit more complicated because I am using compound clips and multicam clips. Links to both of those tutorials will be in the video description below after you're done watching this one. But let's all mouse wheel, zoom in, and you can see that I have some footage here. Well, the first thing I want to do is change my camera angle because I'm riding along doing a dance party and all that stuff. But look, my head's cut off over here. We want to reframe that. Now, I did say this was more complicated because I'm using a multicam clip with a compound clip inside of it. So that's two levels of wrapper before we get to the raw footage. You could try to move this around and keyframe it. And if I come up to my inspector, if you don't see it, click inspector. And I move this left and right. You can see the checkerboard pattern because it's naturally getting cut off. But this was shot horizontal, right? If you're shooting vertical, it's not a problem. I don't often shoot vertical. So I was shooting horizontal. Let's fix that problem. So what we're gonna need to do is right click on our multicam clip, come up to flatten multicam clip and select either one because we haven't done anything to it. And now I have to go one extra step and right click decompose in place using clips only. And now when I come up to my inspector, and I move left and right, you can see that we have extra data to play with. So I could just leave it here, but it's not great. It's not centered. Well, if you have DaVinci Resolve Studio, you have the AI Smart Reframe tool. Let's go take a look at that real quick. So what I'm gonna do with my playhead anywhere on the clip and the clip selected, I'm going to click reset on the transform, and then I'm gonna come down to AI Smart Reframe. You have auto, where DaVinci Resolve is gonna try to figure it out for you, or, I can click reference point, and when I click this little target icon, it gives me a box on here. Can you tell I've done this before? Your box may actually be like this and centered, but I'm gonna place it over my face and bring the window down a little bit and then click reframe. Now, DaVinci Resolve is gonna go through and it's going to try to figure out what the best framing is. Now that it's done, we can see that there's keyframes here on our position. So if we go to the start, there should be a keyframe there. Notice that my head is centered in the frame. And as I click through with my arrows here to all these keyframes, you can see the position X is moving, position Y is not, and that's fine, but it's kept my head centered this whole time. How cool is that? So this on-screen display of where the reference point is doesn't move, but the footage itself does move left to right. I read somewhere online it might go up and down. Let me know if you try this at home if it goes up and down too. Mine just goes left and right. But while we're here, a little bit more about this layout because if you wanna get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty, you're gonna take advantage of more of the features and they show up differently when DaVinci Resolve recognizes that you're working with a vertical timeline. So 
I have my timeline two here, it's vertical. And if I click effects, it opens up here in the middle. If I come to the color page, it looks different here. Now, if you're brand new to Resolve, don't worry, in just a second, I'm gonna show you a horizontal timeline, you know, landscape, if you will, instead of portrait. And then you'll see what I'm talking about. But we have this big window here, this big preview window, so you can see all of your color changes. If I come over here and I grab my shadow, and I bring it up, you can see it's got a big window over there. But if I go back to my edit page and I select timeline one, which is horizontal, and then I right click here and I can change my angle. You can see we've got all our normal data to play with, but when I click effects, it overwrites where the media pool was. So you can go back and forth, but it only takes up this left third of the screen. Blackmagic Design added a little bit of extra workflow spice for us if you're doing portrait versus landscape editing. I think that's pretty cool. Are you learning anything? Boop the like button for me. Let me know you care. Also in the color page, you can see that it looks vastly different. The preview window is not as big and we've got kind of different things going on over here. It changed everything. There we go. We want to go back to my wheels. I don't like the bar graph. I like the wheels. Wheels I understand. But then again, in timeline two, it's all back to that. You got to click around and find your stuff again, but we have our big preview window. And I know I'm blasting through this because it's short. It's a short tip video, all right? So anyway, once you've done all your editing and your reframing and all that stuff, you've done your sound design, now it's time to render. Let's go take a look at some of the render settings that will make this fast and easy for you. So we're going to click on our deliver page icon, and I have a preset. Check this video out next if you want to see how I do my render presets. But here's the big ticket item, all right? Resolution and frame rate. Timeline resolution and timeline frame rate. You will see here it, that it's grayed out, 1080 by 1920. You can select all of these, but it's in a vertical format already. So it's 1080 by 1920 instead of 1920 by 1080. See, and there is our used vertical resolution. So if you come in here, just custom export, it's already selected because your timeline is selected. So I like to use my preset because it gives me what I think is the best bang for my buck for rendering and best image quality. And I've gone through that before, but the big one here is you want that timeline resolution and timeline frame rate. Then you're ready to add the render queue and you can render it and upload it to YouTube. That's pretty easy, right? You can take existing footage from a landscape or horizontal timeline and cut it down into a vertical timeline, render it out, upload it to YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever have you. Whatever you play with at home, it's fine. But you can do all that very quickly in DaVinci Resolve. So, I hope this video was helpful. I thank you for your time today. I do appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's something else you'd like to see me cover in DaVinci Resolve, also let me know in the comments section below. And until next time, check out this video that YouTube thinks you'll like, and I'll see you there. John out.